We're monitoring to the situation in Ukraine. It appears a counteroffensive by Ukraine has begun. There's word right now that Ukrainian forces have crossed into the proper Russian territory of Belgorod. The governor of the region says that a sabotage and a reconnaissance group, that's his words, of Ukrainians have crossed over. Ukraine says the group is made of Russian nationals who are fighting on the Ukrainian side. The Wagner Group is a mercenary group fighting for Russia, and this is what their founder, Evgeny Prigozhin, has to say. De facto, there is a war going on. Today, the special military operation turned into a full war. It's not the first time in the Belgorod, Kursk, and Bryansk regions that we have explosions and people are killed. Joining me live now from Kyiv, Ukraine, is Thomas Much. He's a journalist. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us. What do we know about Bel Belgorod, and why is it so important for Ukraine? And what's this about Russian nationals who are fighting with Ukrainians? So it's a very bizarre development, to, but to try and break it down piece by piece, there has been a small group, a legion, the Freedom of Russia legion, that is made up of Russian nationals, but who are considered loyal to Ukraine, who have been fighting in the Donbass region for several months now. It seems like they have made a surprise raid onto Russian territory. It's unclear exactly what their objectives are, but what these probably are, are shaping operations ahead of a larger scale counter offensive where Ukraine would want to attack the Russians in various different places across their front line. Effectively, what it does is, it's, is it makes Russia divert troops towards places that they didn't have to expect to divert troops to. It also makes the war much more real for Russians on the ground, potentially delivering a morale blow as well. Now, the intended purpose of this raid should become clear over the, few, uh, the next few hours, but that's what we know for now, and it could presage a much larger strike elsewhere. So is Belgorod really just more of a, of a show of force from the Ukrainians? This is a spot that no one expected? It's more likely to be that than the target of their major counteroffensive. The target of their major counteroffensive is speculated to be in the Zaporizhia region towards the south. However, this really does throw the Russians off guard because they now realize that they might have to guard their own border with Ukraine that they had considered secure for a long time. So Zaporizhia, you mentioned that that, that seems there's, they're doing some shelling around the nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia. That's an, a very dangerous development, isn't it? Yes, however, there has been fighting back and forth across the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant since it was captured by the Russians in March last year. So while it is frightening for everyone, especially on the ground in Ukraine, it's nothing that we haven't seen or heard before. Again, it may presage a larger Ukrainian counteroffensive in that region, whether a crossing of the Dnipro River or a strike on the across the front lines in Zaporizhia, the land-based front lines towards the strategic city of Melitopol in the South. So, Thomas, you know, a lot's been said lately about Bakhmut. The city was blown to bits. It's right now a block by block fight that's been going on between the Russians and the Ukrainians. It's, has it been more of a symbol versus any sort of strategic importance? Well, symbols, I think, can have their own strategic importance. I mean, some of the biggest battles of history, you think of places like Waterloo or Verdun, these are fairly nondescript, no-name towns that are only important because of the amount of resources put the various countries have put into them and because of the bloodshed. Both sides decided that Bakhmut would take on a major importance simply because it was where Ukraine decided to make such a large stand. So I would say that it took on a strategic importance by itself, even if it hadn't been that important to begin with. As we know, both Russia and Ukraine probably bled tens of thousands of lives over this small city. And it's only, it's been just kilometers really that they're fighting over in this, isn't it? It's not really, we're not talking enormous swath of, of, of field here. Well, the city of Bakhmut only had about 70,000 people before the war. It was a very small city. Of course, maybe a few hundred of those remain at best. And of the city itself, almost all of it has been completely leveled to the ground. Possibly about 90% of the buildings have been destroyed. So let's move on to uh, President Zelensky. He crisscrossed the globe. He went first to the Arab League summit, then he went to the G7. Now, how is that being, how is that being received in Ukraine itself? 
Well, of course, Zelensky was originally popular for the amount of time he stayed in Ukraine, especially at the start of the war. However, he is in some way being judged on his results. In his European tour, he managed to get Britain, America and Fran uh, Britain, France and Germany to substantially increase their pledges of military aid. Germany nearly doubling about three billion extra dollars it put in. Britain and France agree agreeing to send long range cruise missiles for the first time. So in that way, he can plausibly say that this trip of crisscrossing the world has delivered results. However, it remains to be seen how much of an impact those extra deliveries will make on the battlefield. We'll probably know in the coming weeks when Ukraine does launch the start of its proper counter strike. Great, Thomas Much, thank you so much for joining us live from Ukraine. Stay safe. Thank you again for joining us. Thanks for having me.